Today I'm gonna to be making a coffee table out of these two English walnut slabs. I bought these slabs, they weren't in great condition, so I got them on a discount, and they've been stored outside, which isn't the best place for them to be stored, so it's kind of getting worse. The problem is they're really pretty, and I just don't want them to become garbage, so I want to turn them into something, so that's what we're gonna to do today. The table's gonna to be 24 inches wide, and 48 inches long, and 16 inches off the ground, but the legs are gonna have a through tenon that you'll see on the top of the piece. So the first step now is to start breaking down the wood, so let's go. It was actually broken already. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to lie to you. It's just really funny to me. But uh, this was extremely rotten, and while I was planing it, this broke, and that broke. And while I'm waiting for that to glue up, I'm going to actually glue these back together because the glue is gonna be stronger than the wood. And this isn't gonna see a lot of stress, so I'm not really worried about this overall, but this, these both had cracks in them already. I knew they were gonna be a problem. I didn't think they'd break this easily though. So let me get some glue slathered on here. I like to just use green tape for stuff like this. So I'm gonna use this Titebond Speed Set. It has a short open time and it also has a quick drying time. So I'm gonna use this real fast. And I like to get this all slathered up, put together here. And I just like to use this green tape as a clamp. It makes things work. It just makes it easy instead of having to get a clamp fixed on here. The table is still in clamps, but I wanted to throw it up on the legs so I can kind of get some inspiration because I'm not 100% set on what I'm gonna do with everything here. In putting the legs up here, I did notice that there is some pretty checked wood here. And same with this other leg over here. It's got the same situation where it's checked. So I think what I wanna do is get a couple bow ties in these spots to hold them together. Uh, also on top, I've got some branches. You got some knots here from branches. Um, most of them are okay except for this one and then these two symmetrical ones. So I'm gonna patch them. So what I'm gonna work on now is getting my material cut up and sized down so that I can make my patches. And I'm gonna use the offcuts from the wood that I couldn't use. All right, we're about five hours into the build and we're gonna call it for the day, but I wanted to do a quick recap of where we're at. And we got all these patches into these pieces of wood. This had two nasty knots and a huge knot here. What I ended up doing was putting a big patch here and then doing another patch off that patch, 
kind of a cool like patch pattern look. So did patches here, there's a patch here, and there's a patch here. Next up is the joinery, and we're gonna be doing through tenons. So you're gonna actually see the tenons through the top of the table. It's gonna look really cool. I've done this before, it's really fun, it looks really slick, and I'm really excited to do it. talk about this template and how I made it. If you watched it, you probably saw how easy it was. I literally referenced the tenon to make the template for the mortise. And all I did was put straight pieces of plywood up against it, and I built it in sequence around it and just use CA glue to hold it together. It works really great. This is now a perfect rectangle, square, shape around the, around the tenon. So I can now use this router with a bushing on it, which will allow me to not go outside of the actual mortise template and cut out the material with this half inch bit. So I'm using this compression bit. I like this compression bit because I'm gonna make my first plunge sort of in the middle so that I don't have, cause this is an upcut here, it's gonna pull fibers up, but I'm gonna do that towards the middle of the actual mortise so it doesn't matter. So that when I get below the upcut line, I'll have the bit pushing down. So it'll be a nice clean cut around the top, but then when it gets through to the bottom, it'll be pulling up and I won't have blowout. After I remove the majority of the material with that massive bit, I'll come back with this smaller pattern bit, follow around the perimeter so I can establish an edge, then I'll rip the template off and I'll use the pattern bit to continue all the way down to get right to the edge. When I was putting the top together, I wanted to have the sap would be in the center of the top for the glue line. And I think what happened is this sap wood, because it was sort of rotting, is kind of punky and I think it was retaining some moisture in there. And the glue that I used really does not like water. It's water soluble. So I think that glue line isn't as strong as it, as it could be. So the solution is bow ties. I really didn't want to use any bow ties on this because I'm just kind of burned out on them, but they do provide a very good utility and they will hold this together. So I'm gonna put one down here and one down there. So let me knock that out real fast.
At the end of the day, as a furniture maker, it's my job to make a very good product and a product that lasts and will stand the test of time. And this was made mostly to experiment with new things. I traditionally haven't really been a big fan of these patch pieces, but I was actually having a lot of fun doing this and I actually really like how this looks. And I think it's really clean and modern and I'm just really happy with how it came out. If you've made it this far into the video, I wanted to say thank you. And if you like what we're doing here, there's a lot of great free ways to support us. You can do that by liking and subscribing and commenting. But if you really wanted to help us with your money, we recently started a Patreon page. This is a great way to help support us and help us make better and better videos every time we put one out. So if you wanted to check it out, the link is down below in the description. We're trying to build that community out. And what's really cool is we just started it and we've already got a few members, which is awesome. We haven't even announced it on YouTube yet, but we wanted to share their names here because they are the sponsors of this video. So a big thank you to all of you who watch and support us and a huge thank you to our Patreon members. 